Hi everyone, welcome back to the Purchase Podcast. Joining me today is Jack and James from Snaps. Jack, James, thanks for joining me on the podcast today. Um, first things first, I'll let you guys introduce yourselves. Hello guys, uh, as Carl just said, uh, I'm Jack and this is James from Snaps. And Snaps are instant mobile apps. We're a company based in Teesside and um, we've been running since April last year. And we're now in takeaways and pubs all across the area that have got their own bespoke uh, instant mobile app. And James? Uh, yeah, uh, James, like, as Jack said, weren't with Snaps at the minute. Uh, we both went to the same college in, in Yarm over here in uh, Teesside and both actually ended up going to Newcastle University, uh, fresh out of uni, pretty much almost straight away the pandemic hit and I was found myself looking at what I wanted to do with myself. I had a conversation with Jack and it became very obvious that the next step for me was to jump in with Snaps and see if we could make something really special happen. Good stuff. Now you touched on your bit of journey there, your bit of background about yourselves. You've, you've known each other for quite a while now. So what was that, the same college, was it the same school, same uni? Yeah, same college, yeah. So I, I went to Conyers and James went to the school my mum taught at, which is All Saints, just down the road, unfortunately. <laughs> and then um, James joined our college um, after after that. And we uh, became friends since then, really, I think. Um, yeah, and then since then, I've, I've always wanted to start my own business from after school, to be honest. I've, I've started three or four businesses since then. Um, and this one's the one that's really caught off. And obviously, James can tell you a bit about what he's done after college and how we came to, to, came to be together, really. Yeah, so um, after college, I ended up signing with a, a sales um, program, a company, a recruitment company called Pareto Law. And uh, they actually then facilitated in all my, my career steps. And I ended up joining a technology um, it was a startup, but it was about into its third year of inception. And um, yeah, we had a, a great time there. We started to really take up some traction, getting some great deals over the line, um, secured investment for over 100 million through Great Hill Partners over in the States. And then the pandemic set in. Uh, unfortunately, I was a casualty of that, pan of that. Well, I say I'm a casualty of the pandemic, but you never know what really happened over there. Uh, but yeah, ended up ended up being made redundant there. And uh, went and started a career in sales again at a security company. Um, and I very quickly in that administration realized that I didn't really want to work under people in the sense of, you know, a typical pyramid hierarchy. And um, yeah, I walked away from that really um, after a few bad experiences. And then we had a conversation, me and Jack, and I realized there was a real opportunity and there was things starting to happen at Snaps and they just needed someone else really to come in and try and take a bit of pressure off his shoulders and start to make the, you know, the gains that we we thought we could. And luckily since then we've started to see some, uh, some good growth. That's really interesting. Um, so I want to touch on that. Like Jack, what's it like hiring a mate? What was that like initial conversation? Uh, the conversation went quite well, to be honest. What I was looking for more than anything was someone that I knew I could trust for now. Um, someone that I knew I could work with, someone that I knew could deal with me which is rare, a rare find, to be honest. And then someone that, um, yeah, I knew could work hard and do the job that I wanted them to do. And obviously, like I said, I knew James for a while, so I was happy with with what James had already done previously. And I knew that he could come and work for the team. And he sort of approached me, really. I, I put out a job article and, and James approached me because I didn't really think of, I knew he already had a job. I wasn't, like, in a, in a position to afford someone that could could quit the job, if you know what I mean, right now. So I was looking for someone that James would have been my ideal candidate originally, but I didn't really want to risk, to push the risk out. And um, when he came to me, it was it was a bit of a, it was a relief really. And it was, it has been really good because we, we sort of managed to hit the ground running. We already had the culture set in place. We already knew what we were going to do. We already know that each other works hard. So it was, it we managed to hit the ground running really fast. And that's, it is what you need in a startup life really. I couldn't afford someone that I didn't, I, there was a risk. I couldn't afford a risk at this moment in the startup, to be honest, which was fundamental. Mm -hmm. And James had already mitigated most of the risks that I'd, uh, I'd found, to be honest. So that's in in a positive light, yes. In a negative light, he does tell me uh, tells me what I need to hear sometimes as well. I think, which is good. Again, it, it's it's not it's it's a blessing and a curse. I think most of the time, really. But it is um, yeah, it's refreshing to be honest. And I'm glad I did it. Yeah, I think we made a we made a decision very early on in the process that if we are going to do this. We're gonna have to be accountable to each other, you know. There's, it, it's, it, yeah, it's great working with a friend and stuff, but it also makes things a bit murky. 
and there's times you know especially it when if we're working together that something has to be said if you know if i'm not pulling my weight i don't want jack to sugarcoat it because you know we're, we're friends like it won't hurt my feelings in the sense that you know we're friends and he's, he's digging me out as such is that you know ultimately i'm here to do a job for him and um in, in order to do that, if I need to kick up the ass every now and again, then please, you know, please give us it. And equally, sometimes he needs telling to take his head out of a screen and just go for a walk for 30 seconds, clear your head, get some fresh air and, you know, come back to it. And, and, and it helps. And I think we both, we bounce off each other well in that regard. No, I think that's that's the perfect way to do it. And like, yes, there's one thing hiring your mates, but it's someone that you have to, like, you know, you have to trust this person at the end of the day. Not yep. just to do the job, but to also keep yourself grounded. As a founder, you need that because, well, I can speak from experience with Justin. You know, we do live in the clouds a lot, and sometimes you just have to pull them back. And I think, yeah, what well, you've hit the nail on the head there. Just if one needs a kick up the ass, he'll give them it. Likewise, yeah. uh, perfect. Um, so, what are the what were the motivations, Jack, to um, to form Snaps? What were the motivation behind that? Um, well, I used to work in a technology company that we built mobile uh, apps and websites for businesses and what we found um, was that a lot of businesses wanted a mobile app they really really wanted one because that was the new trend and it's what they felt like they should do and obviously working in a web development co uh, company we saw the costs of mobile apps and that they are very very expensive you're looking at an average i think the average mobile app last year or in 2019 cost seventy thousand dollars to produce so most companies don't have that level of cash to produce something like that. And if they do, it has it sort of has to work. Uh, the model around mobile apps doesn't work like that. So, for example, the average user only downloads one mobile app every two months. Is your app really going to make the cut for that, for that app that they're going to download every two months? I, I highly doubt it. So it automatically becomes a massive risk that you're not going to get your money back on your investment. Secondly, you have to push updates out as well. So if anything goes wrong on your first iteration, it is very, very expensive and very, very slow to push it, updates out to your users. And you end up with, after four or five iterations, you've got people like me that never update the apps and then people that are on the first version that are complaining about things that don't work. And your support staff, again, are dealing with things that you've already fixed, but the people haven't got the updates for. So going from that, what I found really was when we started building web applications, I thought, you know what, I could do the same. For most of these things, I could do the same on a, on a, on a web app, to be honest. It's just that people, when developers build websites, they build them on laptops. So in my head, and I know this from experience, they'll build a website for a laptop, and then they'll scale it down to mobiles. And what they'll do is they'll create a, 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 dem a deadline. For example, let's say I'll build this website by May. They'll spend like typical students do anyway, they'll spend nine weeks on the desktop site and then they'll go, oh, we've got every other device to make it for now. And then they'll quickly scale it down to mobiles and it creates a poor mobile experience. And that's what you get. But 90% of websites, they're a poor mobile experience. So Snaps really came about from the fact that we can actually have the best of both worlds. We can have a great mobile experience, but we can have it instantly that you don't have to download it. And it's cheap and easy for businesses to, to iterate to a thing that actually works. Um, so that's where, that's where the idea of Snaps came from. But from there as well, what we've actually started to do is from the idea of instant apps, if you could get apps instantly, we've managed to come up with loads of different ideas on how it can actually change the world in loads of different ways as well. So, for example, you could walk into an airport and instead of queuing for four hours, you could just open the snap, check into the queue and it'll tell you to come back in three hours and 55 minutes. That means you're not stood round in a line, but you'd never download an app for that. And you probably wouldn't go to the website for that either because, again, you'd expect a poor experience and the app takes too long to download. But if you could open the Snaps app, instantly click on the app that you wanted to go for and book your place on the, on, in the queue, it sort of makes it worth it. It makes that experience worth it. And the benefit, business gains from it from the data that they collect and the customer gains from it because it's much more efficient. It's a much more efficient process for using your mobile at the end of the day. Brilliant. And James, when, when you came into Snaps, what were your sort of motivations? Obviously from the sales background coming into that. Yeah, I mean, I, w I wanted something I could really get my teeth into and I could like almost take control of and, and build and I could see the, you know, the fruits of my labour. And um, knowing Jack, I mean, he was doing a great job already of getting out there and get pushing the product out. Um, but ultimately, he is the guy that has created this platform that knows how it works. And he, he needs to be the man behind it, running it and making sure it's all working effectively. So it was just too much to handle. So I was happy to like, take that pressure and responsibility and just run with it and like see what we can build and try things and 
be bold and not be not be worried about making mistakes. And you know, we, we tr we're trying to if we are going to do something wrong and break something, we're going to do it fast and um, get give it, getting given the green light to do that and be afforded the luxury of failing quickly and failing and not feeling bad about it was something that was like really appealing. Um, and again, like I said, I mean the product. I'm not. I don't come from a technical background, so. I, you know, when Jack talks about iterations and the speed of iterations and turnaround processes, it, it just like kind of goes over my head. But then because I have ultimate faith in what he's doing and how it works, I know that I can take this product that works and it is genuinely beneficial to the industry we're aiming for um, and push it and push it with passion. And it's so much easier to sell, um, you know, and, it, and it's enjoyable. It's 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 not it's not a begrudging feeling walking into the sales meeting and feeling like you're, you're fighting an uphill battle to get these people to sign on the dotted line because ultimately we've got something that is really good and that, you know, once it's incorporated works and people do start to see the benefits of it. So yeah, that was the main reason I think definitely just the freedom. Yeah. I, I like that point there about you not being from a technical background and from my experience being around people from a technical background, I think being with people that can take all that technical jargon and simplify it to its simplest form and so you can then go on and sell that. I think that's a, that's perfect. And I think the way yeah. Jack I understand what Jack says now because I've <laughs> been around yeah. um, technical people. So uh, yeah, it's a great point there. And I think and I, I think that's sort of the, sorry, James. Oh, sorry. Okay. I think like Jack does really well is because sometimes you'll be telling me things at the speed of light, and I'm kind of like, wow, I don't get what you're saying. I have to ask, and I do ask. I just say, all right, what does that mean to the average, you know? layman like me and he does he translates it really well and then suddenly i get it and the light bulb goes and i'm like well if i can use that language in sales meetings i'm talking to people that that are speaking my language per se and um it when it when it translates and it translates well it's it's amazing to just see like people's reactions to it uh, because they get it and that's the main problem i think a lot of the tech suffers with especially when we bring it to market is that people just don't get it it's it's we're so used to simplicity of like we turn it on and it kind of it's foolproof in the sense that we just like swipe away, tap away, and you know, with no second thought. Um, so I need it on that level to kind of get it. And I don't get me wrong, I am I am developing in my technical understanding and the prowess behind it all. But um, for the people that are never going to look at the the backgrounds to how these platforms come about, they need to have that you know middleman per se me um, to kind of not dumb it down, but just make it more accessible for them. And then you know it, it speaks for itself. Yeah, it's just a continuous cycle of confidence, isn't it? Yeah. Jack tells you what it is. You're comfortable with it. You go tell people, and that ultimately helps. Snaps. It's just a, it's a beautiful circle of confidence that you've got going there. So, the has it? Uh, say that again, Jack. Except the me and James part, we're not so beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, people in startups like to hide behind the logos, don't they? So that's that's, that's definitely us at purchase. <laughs> So has there been any um, challenges that Snaps have faced and what were they and how did you overcome them? Yeah, um, well, I think the, the, the major challenge initially uh, was actually getting the idea across to people. Like, why, why are they different between, why is it not just a mobile website? What, what's the difference? Um, and I think that was, that was the major challenge, really. The, the way we managed to do it was... Uh, at the start, we basically, we just made a demo and we showed someone it, and, the, and then in, when the show, when they instantly had it in the hands, they went, "Yeah, I get it now. This is this is a lot better, and this I would use this a lot more." Um, and then since then, we've sort of worked on our um, like the, how how we how we describe it basically, and hopefully, it's a little bit better than when we started anyway. I think, but the major challenge was getting it into people's heads and how how we can do that, and I think that's proven by the fact that. We we do uh, the majority of our sales so far are ones that are in our area, and the reason is because we've actually managed to go and show them it and say this is what it is, this is what it does, and the more uh, we, well, we yet to have someone that's actually had it in the hands and said no because it is something that is ma like so much better than than what they have at the moment and what they can get. Um, I think yeah, I think that was the major challenge. Like, without boring about all the technical challenges anyway, really, I think um, the major challenge was getting it into people's heads and, and trying to get the message across in a in a concise manner that where they're not bored halfway through, which is uh, which I can do very very well by the way, is bore people halfway through my message in the, on the tech stuff. No, that's a great point. I, I don't think anyone truly knows what they have until it's in their customers' hands, because yeah. they will be yeah. brutally honest. It's them um, that's going to be using it day to day. And if there's something very little that they don't like, could be very minimal. 
if they don't like it, yeah. they don't like it. Um, yeah, so that's a good point. And James, for yourself, any any big challenges for you? Um, I think for me, obviously, my challenge is very different to Jack's. Um, but obviously, I'm I came into a, a almost like a blank page, and I'm trying to create a sales process. Um, and I have I do whilst I do have some experience, it's a limited experience to draw upon. Um, so yeah, I think the the research and development, the learning and development on my own side was being like quite important and. You know, it's it's quite hard. It's quite hard to learn how to create an entire sales process, but through mentorship and you know, just picking up information if and when I can um, from people that have done it before, or just whatever whatever mode it may be, just trying to create something that a I'm proud of and b will actually work. Um, and we're slowly but surely getting there. Um, I think we're we're starting to see models and patterns emerge from what we're currently doing that suggest things are going correctly or incorrectly and it's you know it's just all about learning on the fly as, as such just trying to get better day by day and um that's been the main challenge but in you know in over overcoming it jack's been a massive help and just you know a, a reassuring uh hand on the shoulder just to say like come on we can do this and keep going um we've got some i've got some great mentors just in like my personal life as well who people who have been there and done it before and see you know see seen a lot of things in the game and yeah just just being surrounded by positive people and people that, you know, have a, a genuine understanding and a care for what we're doing and want to see it work. So, yeah, that's uh, been my coping, <laughs> coping mechanism for sure. No, that's very good. I think what both you guys do, what any startup does, there is an element of bravery. You know, you have to be a bit brave to try new things and some will fail, yeah, but, but you learn from those failures. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to I wanna know more about your day-to-day -day at Snaps. So, Jack James, what's the average day look like for you at Snaps? Um, the average day, well, I prefer it'd be easy to say the average week. To be honest, the average week we'd set off on a on a Monday. We set our objectives and we write down exactly what we want to achieve for that week. Our and then basically we put a cut few scores on them and say these are our must haves. These are our nice to haves, and then everything else sort of get bundled in between i mean most more times are not in a startup as well though you, you set a week's tasks and then you get 95 more tasks that have to be done urgently for that week so it, it never really works out our nice to haves never get met and there's some <laughs> they're mostly just going when that need to have the week later but, um but that's but yeah and then on the, the average day to day is getting on and, and, and cracking on i think most of the time i think what we, we do well is get on with things um, if we do have tasks that we need to be doing, we make sure that they are done and we, we will stay and make sure that they're done. Um, and, yeah, it's a mixture of talking to people, networking. Obviously, I develop quite a lot anyway, so I need to be developing and designing and stuff. And um, and that's basically it, really, from my point of view. I think James could go through his average day-to-day -day a, lot, a lot in more detail than I can. But, yeah, from, from my point of view, it is just building, iterating, listening to customers, making sure the product at the moment is as good as it could possibly be before we start scaling. Uh, I think that's my day it is, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, much the same, like you said, obviously we set our targets. Um, and yeah, I mean, you, we try, I try to take them as personal as possible. Like, oh, I want to get them met. Um, but like you said, sometimes things come up and, you know, you've got to kind of Avengers assemble moment and you've got to just get out there and do what's got to be done at that, that precise moment. Um, but I mean, networking for me is one of the, the big things. And like, we're starting to see some real real uh, positive impacts from it you know we're surrounding ourselves with industry leaders and experts especially here at home um but you know we're trying to branch out as best as we can and um so like that's something that's really important that i just want to keep on top of because ultimately they're opening doors that i didn't even know exist um and you know one day i will but until then i've got to use this network that we're building um and yeah so it's for as well on the actual sales side of things it's just constant outreach whether it's been hammering you know and any mode of um, contact, we're running experiments to see what works best for us and in our industry. And we're trying to draw as much um, information from them as possible. But yeah, I just want to be out there and getting the product in front of people uh, and just telling, you know, spread the good word of snaps. And luckily so far, people have been pretty receptive to it. So yeah, it's, it's been good. Awesome stuff. You say, you say, I like your line there about Avengers Assemble. I dare ask what <laughs> Avengers you are. <laughs> 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 But no, you're right. I think in a startup, you, you've you got to be ready to, to fight those fires. You know, you'll set your task list off, but as both of you said, it's like something will come up and task one will not get done until next week. It's it's just how it is. Um, You touched on those opportunities there and opening doors. Um, Let's talk about startup boost, because I think 
that for a lot of people is a big opportunity. Um, so I want to know, like, how did you find out about Startup Boost? Uh, well, I, I applied for the Accelerator in Middlesbrough, Digital City, and they said that I wasn't quite ready yet. Um, and they said, you, you're better off going to a pre-accelerator to learn about pitching, about business in general and stuff. And like, because what I had, we were still, we were profitable when we applied for the Accelerator, but it wasn't, we didn't really have a business. It was more just, a pro I built a product that was making a bit of cash, if you know what I mean, that paid my wage. It wasn't really an actual fully formed business. So they said, um, yeah, go to, pre go to a pre-accelerator and they mentioned Startup Boost and said, yeah, you should go, go and, um, and see what it's like. And then, obviously, to be honest, I'm, I'm amazed by how much progress we have made since we joined the course, really. I think that I, it was um, every week we're now... Again, it's defining the message and defining it and being forced to make a pitch from 30 seconds to three minutes has really helped us clarify the message that we actually use. And I personally, I use the message all the time now when I'm telling other people, I've got that 30 second pitch in my head now that we can use time and time again. So that's been invaluable, really, for getting getting the message across. But also as well, just from pure, just from networking, I think, to be honest, it's been it's been unbelievable, to be honest, from a from that from a point of view of just meeting people we'd have never normally have met if we didn't get on the course so um but yeah for, i started from we we actually got told about it from the from the digital city accelerator to come over yeah i mean for me James? yeah for me, i mean for me it's been amazing um like i think looking back at looking back to the what are we, i think four weeks a month now um just to see how far we've came and how, how much i feel like i've came as a, as a as a young professional um it, it's crazy uh, I, I think coming into Startup Boost and stuff, I was incredibly naive into, you know, really what goes on into creating a business because I've always just stepped foot into something someone has already created. Um, and to see, like, all these, like, you, you know, all these people that are kind of driven towards the same type of goal and that, you know, you hear the stories about how much people are working and how hard they're having to work. And it just makes you really hungry for it. And you just got to grind. And I walk away from the Startup Boost sessions just thinking, wow, like, with the next week's ahead, We've got these things that you know we've spoken about. We can now implement them, and it's just it, it's just refreshing again. It just recharges me. And uh, like Jack said, I mean the networking side of it's been incredible. We met some great people, um, and the the help they've offered um, has been you know quite humbling as well. In the sense that you know we don't forget that we are just two two lads from Teesside. That you know we've just we've we've, we've got something that we want to do, and we're going to try and do it. And hopefully, we know we have a big impact whilst we're doing so. And people's re reception to us and the way people have you know kind of just been like yeah we'll we'll help you out it's it's yeah it's been incredibly humbling it's been really nice to meet these people and some of the some of the good work that's going on behind closed doors is you know it's genuinely great <laughs> cheers james <laughs> no it's 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 um it's great especially like when we get the speakers in that we want i know we yeah. had nick himowitz on and obviously you've heard me and dad talk Sorry, Mark. Um, so much about how, how much we like this guy and how much he, he delivers on YouTube for free. Um, so to see in, to see all the startups give value from that, I think that that's rewarding for us as well. You know, seeing, I think it was actually yourself, James, um, on LinkedIn, just saying thanks to him and stuff. Just little things like that. It's just been, it gives me a mark, like the confidence for next week and the weeks ahead. So it's really good. Anything out there, James? You were... Yeah, I mean, like, I mean, you just touched on the Nick Himmo session. I mean, the guy's a straight up ninja. Like, you know, some of the stuff he was he was saying was was it's 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 the game. It's the nature of the beast. We're in this style of game, and there's so much to learn. And you know, you you turn the page and you think, wow, I've I've got it. I've finally cracked the code. And all of a sudden, boom, something else is in front of your face. You're like, wow, I've got so much to learn. And um, like Nick Nick's Nick's thing was it helped us really just solidify an image of what we want to do in our head um and yeah for free you know what i mean like the the what the little master class nick put on is something that people would pay like seriously good money for and um to have it you know just at, at your guys disposable at disposal uh, disposal at start boost is, is great and it it can only it can only benefit people that are, are willing and prepared to genuinely put the time and effort into engaging and you know letting it influence and working on that no, it's really good. And each week you, you pitch and you practice your pitch. But I want to know about the first time you pitch snaps. How how was that? Tell me the setting. What was what in general in life? When when did you first pitch snaps? When was the first time you ever stood in front um, of someone well, and told them about your idea? So I, 
It was um, I, it was terrible, by the way, just to start <laughs> off. But it was, uh, it was uh, I still had a job um, working for Tech in, in Middlesbrough, and I sort of I wanted to persuade my boss that I should be getting paid to do my own idea, and uh, obviously it did not work out, to be honest. So it was, but it was it was one of those things that the the, the pitch was was average and then the, the tech was was even worse i think to be honest when i showed him it so it wasn't it didn't go down well and yeah my yeah i'm very very glad that we've got on the start <laughs> to start actually getting some mentors on the pitch itself to be honest but it was um yeah it was nerve-wracking the first time but i was full of confidence that it was going to be great but i'd never i didn't do any research into what i should be talking about or whatever and um he hit me with a very honest thousand questions to go away and answer to be honest and then which was good though you needed to hear it and it was good to and it was good to I'm not, I don't regret doing it um but yeah eventually I left and obviously yeah we had to go off in our own ways and then join join you guys to actually teach me how to pitch properly which or te- teach us how to pitch properly which is uh, more than worth the uh well, the money that we didn't put in anyway it's free, <laughs> it? so. and James I know you're pitching slightly different because you have to sell it so tell us about yeah. your first sales pitch of Snaps. How did that go? Sales pitch, wow. Um, so which one? Well, my first sales pitch was very, very shortly after uh, me and Jack had got together. I, I had a really good friend of mine whose um, family ran a ran a hotel and pub. Um, and I, straight away, I just picked up the phone. And I just rang my friend. He's called Connor. I was like, Connor, I've got a, <laughs> I've got the most amazing product to show you. I think honestly, you'll learn you so much more money. You'll absolutely love it. And obviously, I'm rattling things off a million miles an hour. And Connor's just like, whoa, slow down. Like, how are you doing? First of all, <laughs> it's been a while. <laughs> um, he was like, oh yeah, you know, you go into the formalities, you have a nice chat, and then I think the switch went on in my head that you know, yes, I'm excited about this. Yes, it's great, and yes, I think it can help Connor out. But there's a there's a genuine art to it, and um, I'm lucky enough to have actually benefited from some sales training before and some pitch training before. So I ended, I ended up going down, went down it's in Doncaster. I went to Doncaster with my, you know, my sales belt on, all my all my tools strapped in, and um, <laughs> I remember I like kind of went right. If you wouldn't mind sitting down, I went into full blown presenter mode, trying to be as flamboyant as possible, and straight away like I had a hiccup. <laughs> and I actually remember thinking, wow, I do not know the stuff I need to know yet. So I, I actually, in the middle of the sales pitch, I was like, just bear with me, please, guys. And I'm lucky. And I benefit from the fact that, you know, he was a friend. I rang Jack. And like, obviously, in, like looking back, incredibly, incredibly poor from me and incredibly poor performance. I rang Jack. I was like, right, yeah, how do I do this again? And I just need to show him this. How, how do I do that bit again? And obviously, I walk away from that. Obviously, don't get me wrong. We got the sale and we got it over the line and it's working brilliant for you, for the guys. Shout out the region if anyone wants to pop down to Donny and check it out. <laughs> but um, yeah, and I was just like, I've got to really polish up on this stuff. And actually, that's where Startup Boost came in. So one of, the, one of the biggest takeaways I've had from it is the work we're putting in for the pitches and then seeing Jack, who's often presenting to you guys, actually present it is just a constant loop reel of this is what it is this is what we do this is the message we're trying to encapture and send to everyone so like going from point connor to where we are now and i had a sales pitch last week it's just an entirely different ball game you know i felt so switched on in the latest one i've done and i was able to answer all the questions and it just flowed so smoothly and it's it's great to just see that progress and just know well wow look at the look at the look at the steps we've taken in a month to improve like imagine where we're going to be after 12 and after two years and after five years and you know and it's just it's exciting I'm looking forward no it's really good i'm glad you just went in on that question because some people shy away from talking about their first like pitches and stuff <laughs> i know my pitch was exactly the same it was terrible uh it was at a time where purchase didn't even have the colorful branding that it does now we we didn't have colors it was black and white it was black and white with stock images <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was, I remember it was late right. as well. It was like six o'clock at night. It was just bad. <laughs> yeah. I think it's also the the less like age you have, the more the the harder you have to work to get the message across. So it's probably it benefits you more than anything else, really, doesn't it? From from working on it at an early start, it does really help in trying to explain what it actually is, um, rather than anything else. Yeah, and one thing I've found is like don't be afraid to change your message as well. It's like yeah. if you if you pivot slightly, you know, change your message because it's like A/B testing your messages, isn't it? If one message doesn't work, try this one. I think yeah. um, not having that fear just benefits your startup. Yeah. Oh, that's really good. Um, 
I want to get into sort of um, I want to get in the clouds a bit here. I want to know your goals for 2021. What are what are some personal goals? What are some snaps goals? All my goals, snaps goals, to be honest. I don't have personal goals. There, but, true, um, true founder. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, snaps goals for 2021 is, um, is well, is to become a serious player in the takeaway and pub market in Teesside, I think. So I'd like, I, when, oh, I need in the cash flow thing, and we need at least 200 venues on board that were actively using the platform, that are actively... Uh, generating serious revenue through it, I think, which is which is possible from the ones that we've got already got. Um, we we can we can definitely get there. I think that's a reasonable aim. Um, but what I'd most like out of 2021 is to release the 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 Snaps app that we want to get in the Snaps network and start getting our initial users to sign up, register their interest, and and start really discovering what Snaps is all about by reading the news, playing some games, shopping online ordering your takeaway, ordering from your pub, doing it all instantly and getting that real mobile app experience, but getting them all instantly. I think that's the, um, that is the major aim for 2021 for me, to be honest. And James? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, yeah, likewise, Ari snaps. And I think the growth that we're actually aiming for within the hospitality sector, especially it is more than achievable. Um, and I think, you know, we're making the right steps in order to do it. And I think when we talk about like what we're doing now and where we want to be, we'd say in my head, um, and Jack might actually disagree with me, but it's like almost our phase one and phase two. So we're like at the minute we're in, you know, snaps phase one. We're attacking the hospitality market and we're starting to disrupt and, you know, be a bit of a nuisance to the people that already think they're established in there and starting to see, you know, real traction. Um, I want to complete phase one. I want to have phase one done and dusted to the point where we know we have got such a reliable product that it is going to tick. Um, don't get me wrong; it never gets, it'll never get neglected and just like never looked at again. It's always going to be a work in progress. But yeah, as Jack says, moving on to phase two and the you know the grand idea, the thing that we really, really want to spend our time doing and developing and um, bringing to the market is is the network, is the app, and to get that completed, I mean, well, to get that initiated would be a genuine milestone, and you know, in terms of the company, um, personally as well, yeah, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to fulfil you know Jack's trust. I want to prove to him that. In 12 months' time, you made the correct decision, not like the best decision that Snaps has actually made in the acquisition of me. I want to repair that trust and I want to, like, you know, I want to prove myself. Um, so I, I think, especially coming out of the job I was working in, um, my confidence had taken a huge knock. I'd felt like maybe the, I aren't cut out for this game anymore. And all of these talents that I thought I had and I'd built up and spent so long trying to create something out of, I just kind of lost interest in and the passion and the spark had just gone. Um, since joining Snaps, the, the passion's back and the spark's back. And um, it's to be given that off like a friend is one thing, but like, you know, to be given it in a professional setting is like something that I have a genuine, genuine point to prove. And uh, yeah, hopefully in 12 months' time, we both look back and say, wow, well, what a bloody good decision it was getting you in it. <laughs> you know, it was more, more uh, in the clouds, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's good to be in the clouds every once in a while. <laughs> yeah, you've got to do it, haven't you, really? I guess nobody would start a business if you didn't think it was going to be massive at some point in time. So, Very true, very true. It, it, it's your baby at the end of the day, and you want your baby to do well. So there's yeah, nothing. Yeah. There's no harm in being in the clouds. <laughs> so um, moving on now, I've got a couple more questions left. Um, what advice would you give... Um, your fellow startups and entrepreneurs or people thinking of starting a startup, what advice would you give them? Talk to as many people as possible. Go to your customers and talk to them in real life. Um, make sure that you become friends with your customers. Make sure that they are comfortable to tell you everything that they don't like about it and make sure they actually use it as well. It's There is one thing that don't you don't have to listen to everybody, but you do have to listen to the majority of people, unfortunately. And if, if, if you go with... 50 people and 49 of them say that they wouldn't use it, then they're not going to use it when you, you, you've made it, if you know what I mean. My second bit of advice is always charge for what you give them. Never, ever give anything away for free because people, I'll take I'll take anything for free, if you know what I mean. It doesn't mean I'm going to use it or pay for it. It means that you, I've been polite at the end of the day and you don't want that. You want you want to talk to as many people and then you want to, even if, it's, even if the product isn't very good, if you can take some cash off them, it means that you've solved the problem or they at least think that you're going to solve a problem in the future with what they've paid for. So they're my two fundamental bits of advice, I think, to be honest, for anybody. Mm. 
yeah, I think to that end, done is better than perfect, you know, at the start. Um, you've got the rest of time to make something perfect. But, you know, you want to get done in the here and now and you want to get started because it, time waits for no man, unfortunately. And if you're not doing it, someone else definitely is. You know, don't be naive to think that you're that, that you've created something that no one else has thought of. It's if you have bloody hell great, you know, please do run with it. But nine times out of ten, you're going to have created something. And there is someone knocking at the door and there's someone just around the corner. So you best hit the ground running and go get after it. Um, and another thing, yeah, just be bold, be brave. Um, don't let outside influences deter you from where you want to go. Um, yeah, by all means, take on board counsel from wherever you may heed it, but get after it. If you've got a vision and you're brave enough to go at it, that's something in itself, definitely. Um, and yeah, it's true. Fortune does favour the bold. So go go try and be bold, break things, fix it after. Just yeah, experiment and see where you end up, definitely. Yeah, I've got nothing out there. Those were some great points. I like the better one at the end there. Don't don't be afraid to break it. <laughs> uh, it is a, it's a genuine point though. If you're solving a problem, people aren't that bothered if it doesn't work a hundred if it doesn't work perfectly. They're more than happy to give you the time and patience to fix the things that they want. And if if anything, it's probably better to have a little bit of things that they they can ring you about and say, Can you improve this? Because when you do that, that it builds that relationship up with your customer and, and you will get more and more feedback throughout time as well. Anyway, so you probably benefit more from having something that isn't perfect than something that you it is yeah it's very true and I, I think the point was made before it's like the customers will know more about your product than you will they'll find things yeah. that you never even think about but yeah some great points there um next thing i'm going to try something with you guys that i haven't tried before okay so i'm going to say a word okay and i want you guys to give me a word back to describe that word okay so first things first snaps amazing one word. One word. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Groundbreaking. I know that's two, but it's kind of the same word. Okay. Okay. I'll let you off. Jack. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, bald. Oh, Found it. <laughs> <laughs> um, innovative. Ooh, James. Cheeky. Brave. <laughs> Startup boost. Worth. Oh, I was going to say worth it. Uh, okay, I'll let you have two words. Well, I'm worth it. <laughs> Invaluable. Bars and restaurants. <sighs> so hard finding one word. You can have two. <laughs> Need <laughs> um, it's the bread and butter. Bread and butter. That was free, but I like I like that one, so I let you off. This is bad in this game. Last one. The future. Snaps. Exciting. Brilliant. Never tried that before, and it worked out quite well. It's quite fun, man. I was worried. <laughs> you never know what your brain's going to tell you, though, does it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it was brilliant. Um, and lastly, guys, where can people find you online if they want to connect and just reach out? Uh, snaps.co.uk, S-N-A-P-P-S.co.uk, or Snaps on Facebook, Instagram, or LinkedIn. Yep, and e equally, likewise, we're both on LinkedIn. Um, and... If, yeah, well, I won't give out our email address and stuff just in case, but um, if you have a look, you'll be able to find us without a doubt, definitely. Brilliant. And I'll um, put your links in the description as well on the YouTube video. Awesome. But, yeah, from myself and the Snaps Boys, this has been the Purchase Podcast, and thank you. Thanks a lot, guys. Cheers.